right, y'all. Welcome back. Jason Michelle here at Echo Nesters. We've got Bad Betty with us. Those that have been following along know that Bad Betty is our 2022 Winnebago Echo built on that. Oh my gosh. Very reliable. Ford all-wheel drive transit chassis. We love it. We've talked about that in other videos. So what are we doing out here? Why are we standing by where our propane cylinders are stored? Well, we're going to be talking about leak detection today, and we're going to be talking about the importance of doing some pre-trip checks. Now, I, I do need to kind of give a disclaimer here. The things that I'm going to go over are going to be some fundamentals of what to check, where some of the propane tanks are located, and some of the tools that you might purchase and or look into so that you can do some of your own inspections. Again, this is a base. There's a lot more involved at times in going through this and doing a very thorough evaluation, but because Bad Betty is relatively new, she's a 2022, I have to assume that in theory, we still have lines that are in very good condition. We shouldn't have very many leaks. A lot of things should be well maintained in most respect. But again, when you're getting ready to go on a trip or your Bad Betty, your Echo has been stored over the winter and or you've taken some time away from it and it's been sitting out, there are critters such as mice or even some sort of field rats or attic rats or whatever that could have got around some of your components and chewed through some of your lines and got a little bit curious. So that's one of the reasons I think it's important to double check this stuff. It's only gonna take a little time. We're gonna walk through it step by step, but once you have the steps, you're gonna be able to do this pretty quick. So right now we are on the passenger side. And on the Winnebago Echoes, you have two 20 pound cylinders, if you will, propane tanks that are stored right here in the compartment. You'll also notice, and this is by law requirement, that there are no locks on here. There are locks in other compartments and obviously, but in the event that there is a leak, a fire, the fire department, if you will, needs to access these quickly and they are not gonna wait on your keys. So they need to get in here and take care of business in the unfortunate event. So that's why there's no locks. Please don't put any on, you'd be in violation. So now that we're inside the compartment, if you will, where they're stored, you're gonna probably notice if you come down here that it is somewhat of an open compartment. There's lots of air that can flow through here. And at the same token, that also gives us some exposure to things that we could come in contact on the road. The other thing that you're gonna notice is that you have these dual tanks, you have a regulator, and you have a main, what I'm gonna call a distribution line. You'll notice that there are different size hoses here. You may also notice that they have what I'll call a little pigtail. That is intentional. We can talk about that later if necessary, but this is still referred to as a pigtail. In the old days, just a little fun fact, these would have been copper and or brass, but over time, uh, folks have changed the materials and in some respect have improved the materials. And one of the things you'll also notice is that they're all tagged with a UL listing, meaning that they have met a guideline and have been tested. This is also important. We would expect that from the manufacturer, it's there. You'll notice right now that we have a little dial and right now both sides are red. That's what we want. That's telling me my tanks are off. Now let's actually have a little conversation about that. One of the things I've been asked, especially whether it's in person on one of the Facebook groups, there's been a lot of discussions, at least on Winnebago Echo Free Speech Group, is, hey, do you drive with them on? Do you drive with them off? What's the protocol? Well, there is no regulation or requirement to tell you to turn them off or to leave them on. It is your choice and what you're comfortable with, with some exception. And I can leave some information uh, along with some of the products we're gonna use in the description. There are certain tunnels and certain ferry access areas where they want these disconnected and off. But in most cases in the United States, driving down the road, you can leave them on. I leave them off. I don't need any of my internal components right now. Stove, um, the refrigerator is not run off propane. I don't need the tankless water heater running when I'm driving down the road, but there are people who do, so we won't labor that anymore. Your choice, no requirement. If you do have them off, your dial right here will be red. Now, in the event that I turn on one of the tanks and I have the arrow, as you see, pointing towards this tank, we're gonna assume that we're using the front facing tank and I turn that on. Remember righty tighty lefty Lucy, it turns green. It tells me I now have propane flowing through this line. Now I've charged it. It is charged up into the point of this regulator. And in theory, until I open up another component, there's not much if any gas in this line. However, when we get ready to take our tester, we're gonna go ahead and place it in a couple areas 
and then we're going to move to the next tank. Now let's talk about testers real quick. <clears throat> if you notice here, I have a liquid, liquid leak detector. I'm in construction and oftentimes we use this when we're dealing with natural gas connections and furnaces. It makes a nice little sudsy bubbly component. I'll just kind of show you right there. And in the event that there's air or water, I'm sorry, not water, but propane or a gas leak, wherever I put this, we would get a bunch of bubbles. This is not my preferred product for doing this leak detection and finding out if I have a leak. I would prefer what I'm gonna to refer to as a sniffer. In this case, I picked up two. Uh, this little, if you will, combustible gas detector happens to be a little small unit. Reminds me of a little test light for electrical. I picked up two because I wanted to see which one I preferred. Immediately, I knew this wasn't the one for me, and I can talk about that later. The second one that I picked up on, our, if you are a combustible gas leak detector, which will work on propane as well as natural gas, was one that had a 16 and a half inch lead, a little sniffer, and also had, if you will, a readout to tell me what levels of exposure I'm having and or leaks. You'll also notice it comes in a nice little storage case. You can keep it in your garage or wherever you prefer to keep your tools. It has a great user's manual some instructions and comes with the batteries. <clears throat> in a few moments, sorry about that. In a few moments, we're gonna actually put this to use and test, and I'm gonna show you how it works. So if you're looking for a tool and you want my opinion, I'm not, again, sponsored by this brand. I have no affiliation. We paid for this with our own money, but I prefer this one because it's gonna get in places a lot easier and it's got a digital readout. Again, we're gonna go over that in just a few moments. So we're outside at the two tanks. I have just actuated, if you will, one of the tanks. I know I have a connection here to the tank. I have a connection here that goes into this regulator and I have a connection here, but those are not your only connections. One of the other connections, if you will, that you have is right here where you can put, as an example, your outdoor gas lead that can go to anything from a trail fire, if you will, like we use all the time to cook some grubbing meals. Or if you have a tailgate package, we'll open that up later and talk about that. And then inside you have your stove, your propane stove, your suburban stove. We're gonna be talking about that too in a recall that was done and why that was done and why we wanna test those areas. We also have some connections here where our Truma Aqua Go is. We have a propane feed here. We've got some regulators. We've got some things going on. We're gonna get to that again in a little bit. However, there are also areas within the echo or on the echo where these lines go that we have no access to. And there are places that we typically aren't looking, which we're gonna take you under the coach and give you those areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the equipment turned on. I'm gonna step away for a moment and we'll be right back with you. And we're gonna go through the testing. So we're back and for my aging eyes, I've got my up close glasses. So <laughs> we're all set up here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my preferred method of testing and looking for leaks is going to be with the one that comes with the wand. Uh, this is the brand I chose. There's lots of brands out there. Uh, this one happens to be doing a great job for me. So I'm gonna stick with it. You may have other things that you like and enjoy. So what we've got here is we've got the batteries in it. It's ready and fired up. This is our sniffer, if you will. We always want to maintain and keep this clean just with a nice basic cloth because some of the gases can build up on here. We also want to make sure that as you see, the piece that is removable, and again, this is all in the instructions. This you want to be careful with. There's a little sensor there that everything's can clean. In the instructions, it talks about that. So I'm going to screw that back on. I'm just gonna wipe everything down. I don't have any propane on my hand or any residue, if you will. You'll first start by firing it up. As you see, it's also gonna go through a waiting procedure. I'm gonna go ahead and peel that tag off for y'all. Maybe that'll help. And right now, it's kind of, if you will, calibrating. And so it's gonna tell us when it's ready. And once it's done and it's calibrating, because it's actually sensing everything out here, we're gonna go ahead and run through some of the functions and test it out. In the meantime, while it's calibrating, if you will, you've got a low, um, I'm gonna call it a mid, and a high sensing mode. These are, again, these are the key components that we're gonna be, or I should say the buttons we're gonna focus on. The thing to keep in mind, when you're looking at, there we go, you heard a little chirp, 
it is now ready. Right now, we are detecting nothing, which is good. I wouldn't think we would. Um, if we did, it means we would have a major gas leak. We'd probably either smell it or hear it. So this is going to be ready. But you can start in the low mode, the, mi the mid mode, and the high mode. In a few moments, I'm going to explain the difference of those and how each one is going to give you different levels, if you will, um, of, let me just grab it here and I can share this with you all, of detection. As I mentioned, they have a great set of instructions. It comes in multiple languages. And we'll move on right here. And there we go. So it talks about when you're turning it on, roughly 30 seconds to calibrate. But one of the things that I think is important to note here is that when you're using this, it will measure anything from 700 parts per million, 400 parts per million, or 50 parts per, mil per million, depending where you have it set. If you come down here, and I act like we're all reading this together, you'll want to start in the high sensitivity mode where it's measuring the under 50 parts per million. Um, and then you can feather down and go to the medium, the low sensitivity, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, in the low sensitivity or medium sensitivity modes, the concentration levels are measured in larger intervals than in the high sensitivity mode, meaning greater calibration levels are required to illuminate the indicator, okay? So just for kicks, let's assume that we are going to start if you will, in the low sensitivity mode, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and take my sensor. I'm gonna push low. I know I have a fitting here, and if you can get yourself in there, I'm gonna go ahead and flash a light in there. You will see that we have a tank fitting right there. We've got our valve. We also have another fitting right here that leads our hose to our regulator. All of those areas we're gonna test. So I'm gonna push my button here. And I'm going to put the sensor right around here and just to see if I'm picking up any levels. Right now, I'm not picking up any levels. I know, know the gas is on because we have green here. I'm going to go ahead and move into this area. You might recall earlier we put a little bit of uh, bubble action right there, leak detector. Nothing's going on there. And since I'm here anyway, I'm going to check around the regulator. Now, I have not moved to this tank yet intentionally. And that is because we want to start with our first tank and our first fitting. So I'm going to move my dial on over. You'll notice that that still says that it's green. I have the tank off. So why is that happening, you might ask yourself. Because the regulator has already sensed that there's propane in here. How do I get rid of that? Well, let's go on inside and bleed it off together. Follow along. Pretty easy. Notice I have the door open. I want plenty of air to move. And I'm going to go ahead and just lift this up. You're also welcome to open up a window. I'm going to just turn this on. You can hear it. It's going to bleed off the propane. Just like that. It's going to clear the line. And that red indicator, if you will, will have gone off. And let's take a look. Right there. We've bled it. We are now facing this way. I'm going to make sure that my right tank is off. I'm going to turn on my left tank right here. We now know we have propane. I'm gonna come back to my meter and I'm gonna check again for any leaks. Just give it a few moments. You're welcome to change your sensitivity modes if you choose. I just went through low, medium, high for kicks. Again, nothing's going on, no leaks. I've checked the tank fitting. I checked my valves. I've checked my connection here and I've kind of run it along my hose, and now I've checked this area. So right now, I feel pretty confident that we don't have any leaks here, but we're not done yet. So I'm gonna shut my tanks back off for a moment, and I'm not gonna go in and bleed it right now. And I had shared with you, which we're gonna go under the vehicle in a few moments here, that this line that feeds the rest of the coach, if you will, the rest of Bad Betty, travels quite a few places. We're gonna cover all that, and I'm gonna show you the importance of why you wanna follow this line as much as possible and inspect it. Because there are some things that I think could have been different on the Echoes and or maybe another RV where this has some exposures to things that I think might be hazardous. My opinion only, I didn't engineer the rig. It's just my thoughts. So we're gonna get set up to go underneath and we'll be right back with you again. 
So one of the things I thought we could do before we go underneath, just to kind of give you an idea of what you're going to hear audibly and what you're going to sense on the meter is, I'm going to create what we would call a major leak, meaning I am not going to ignite our propane. I have my door open. I have other windows open throughout the coach, or I should say Bad Betty. I'm going to turn this on and get my sniffer right in here. Now I know that propane is flowing, so I'm going to test it. And as you can see, it is lighting up like a Christmas tree. And that is telling me, which we knew the obvious, that we have a propane leak. Now, it is still sensing what is going on around here. Let's talk about something. Yes, I have, I'm gonna shut her down. The door open, I have windows open, and I'm making sure that we clear that. Because actually, if you do have a major propane leak and we were confined in here, propane will suffocate you. Uh, don't doubt that at all. I also mentioned that your Bad Betty or Winnebago Echo comes with a sensor right here. Uh, basically, it's very similar to a smoke detector and or carbon monoxide uh, detector, but this one is for, for propane. It has a test button. And I was a bit loud and I would recommend that you test that at least once a week if you're heavily traveling and or whatever schedule works for you. I think that that would be important. It has got some decibels to it, but you want that. If you notice, we had some propane in here, some pro and that did not go off. It doesn't mean that that unit is not working. It is lower than where our gases are. And we're gonna talk about why I think they placed it there in relationship to some other things that are going on. So I'm gonna shut this back down, make sure everything's off. We're gonna go on outside. We know that we have our tanks out here and we wanna find out further what's going on with our lines. So I'm back outside where our two tanks are on the passenger side of our Echo and it'll be done calibrating in about 10 seconds. I had mentioned that it's a good idea just to keep this clean up per the manufacturer's instructions. So I feel pretty confident that we're pretty clean there. Now, one of the areas that we did not test yet, and we will here in just a moment, is our outside, if you will, plug-in. Okay, so it's all ready. That little chirp, let us know. And again, this is where I can go ahead and connect an external line, like you see here. And I can either go to my tailgate package, should you have one, and or something like my trail fire. So one of the things that you'll notice on this valve is it's got a little on and off lever here. You'll also notice that right now, because it's red, I have no propane being delivered. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on one of the tanks. We know that again that that tank is on because this turned green. And I'm just gonna pretend for a moment that I was making a connection for my outdoor stove and I wanna test this feed because in theory, until I use this compressed fitting, it should not be leaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my test button. I'm gonna take a look around here. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna check back here where some other parts of the connection are, to our valve bodies, our handle. I sense nothing right here. I've got nothing going on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. It should not leak because I have actually compress that in there. And right now I feel pretty confident as I test my hose that I don't have a leak. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this back off, disconnect this, and I'll put the plug back in and close her up. And now we're gonna talk about going underneath here. So as we go underneath, I'm gonna leave the tank on. The reason I'm gonna leave the tank on is I want some gas in this line. I wanna know what's happening. The other thing that I'm gonna choose to do, you wanna follow along with me real quick. Doors are open, windows open. I'm gonna move my sensor far enough away here. I'm just gonna get some gas going through the line real quick. And it should be happening here in a moment. There we go, I can hear it. I'm gonna shut it back off. This is arrows up. I'm gonna leave doors and windows open. Just go ahead and leave that alone so it can air out. I now know that I have charged lines here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Michelle take a little journey underneath here. I got her some rubber pads down here Try. for her back. <laughs> and uh, I've got a light so that we can see some things. So this is where it gets tricky, y'all. All right. I'm gonna lay down and take the phone from Michelle. And I've got our um, back scratcher here, <laughs> but we're not gonna scratch her back. It's just for a pointer. And I'll take the phone from Michelle. We've got our gas leak detector. 
You just want me to come under? Yep, come on under uh, because you're going to do some filming. All right. Okay. Let's do it. So we are now underneath. You'll see that we have our main gas line. Wow. And I apologize for the dirt falling. <laughs> but this gas line, if you will, this propane line is protected by a little sheath because we are exposed right now. You'll also notice that there's a fitting inside here. I don't know if you guys can see where my finger's pointing in here. I should say where yeah. my little pointer is. Okay. Yeah. You'll notice that there is a metal shield. This right here is to protect the fittings and the lines from, uh, uh, let's call it road debris falling up. But you're gonna also notice that we have some exposed lines here, yet our valves are protected. This bothers me. That's just me. I'm sure somebody has a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. You'll also notice that we have a fitting here. This was our outside, if you will, tailgate and or trail fire or barbecue connector. We've tested the opposite side of that. So I'm gonna break out my tester. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my test button. I'm gonna kind of put it around here. And again, I'm gonna follow this hose as much as possible. Now I'm gonna come back over here, again, underneath our shield, if you will, with my little back scratcher I'm pointing at. And I'm gonna push this in here very carefully and just see if I sense anything. So far, nothing, this is good. And I feel pretty confident right now. I'll change my mode. Again, I can go high, low, medium. We'll just play with it a little bit. See if we pick up. Now, you're going to want to play with the sensitivity modes based on what we discussed earlier, especially when you're outside um, because you got a lot of air and things moving. So I'm going to just say that we are confident we don't have a leak here. Now, I told you earlier that I had some concerns about this gas line. Now, I'm gonna move the light, okay? These two are exposed to the road. My valves are protected. My tanks, as you can see, are just above us. But you'll notice that the hose, and I'm pointing to it right here, travels off. Now, where does it go? I'll take you on that journey here in just a moment. But as it comes through, it travels along underneath the coach and it re-exposes itself. So we're gonna take a break here and switch positions so you guys don't have to hear us fumble around. And I'm gonna take the camera over here and I'm gonna share with you what I don't like. So, so now Michelle and I are just adjacent to the steps where you enter the door. And these are the leaf springs of the vehicle. Here's the rear axle, and here are my Falcon adjustable shocks I just love. But let's stick on subject. I love, I just get carried away. This is the propane line that I told you travels on over and is exposed. Now, where does it go? It goes straight up into Bad Betty, where her suburban, if you will, propane tank is. And I told you earlier that I had some concerns here. These are metal straps or brackets, I should say, not straps. Right here, you can hear them. And there's two right there. And our rubber line, which again has been tested, is met, if you will, some stringent testing procedures, is again exposed. It's right above my leaf spring. And the thing that is suspending it is metal, as I mentioned, but what bothers me is there is a zip tie here. And that zip tie is right there on my hose. And there is no isolator, as you can see, between my zip tie and my hose. And when you think of a vehicle traveling down the road, especially something like an RV, it is going down what I like to call a hostile environment. The road conditions change, the things that are in the road, snow, ice, heat, whatever, and all of those things play a factor. And there is no isolator here, that bothers me. So we might play with that in the near future. I'm gonna maybe make a modification. I can't tell you to do that, but if you choose to and you wanna follow my lead, Sounds like a plan. Now, what we're gonna do is, as mentioned before, we're gonna use our tester and we are gonna follow the line as much as possible right here. And I'm just, again, because this is an exposed line and this might be overkill, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep, now that's me, I'm changing the modes right there, the sensitivity, if you will. And this nice 16 and a half inch lead gets me way back in here. So as I was mentioning earlier, this is why I like this one. So I'm pretty confident that as it gets ready to go up into the coach that we don't have any outside leaks. 
So Michelle's been a real trooper underneath. I you want to show them where you're at? Show, take, just show them exactly where you're at. Show them all these cool <laughs> things under here. The mufflers, the drive lines, the shock struts. We got our rear differential. I mean, the list goes on. Kind of cool under here, but. Yeah. So we're going to climb on out and we're going to get to the next part. We'll catch y'all as soon as we get out of here. <laughs> all right. So we're outside. If you have a tailgate package, and I'm being very careful with this because, again, it has a sensitivity meter on it. And you come on out here and you've got a tailgate package. You're going, it's going to be a little squeaky here, folks. Sorry about your ears. You're going to also know that we have an outside, if you will, propane stove. So, as you can see, just from vibration, that had already come off. We were talking about vibration earlier. You're going to notice under here we have a propane connection. So, earlier, when I was talking about this hose, I said, well, this is where we make our connection. We're gonna do that right now, because again, we wanna test for stuff. So I'm gonna pull back the collar. I'm gonna insert the male end. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my valve on. That's just the way that I do it. I'm gonna come back over here. Again, I'm gonna pull back on the collar here. And I'm gonna slide it over, if you will, the male side of this nipple and lock it, whoops, sorry, and lock it on. I feel like that's pretty locked on. I'm gonna take my tester and I'm gonna go ahead and follow my line again and all my connections. Again, just seeing if I have some leaks. You might think this is overkill, but this has to be the difference between you having an incident that has to do with the leak and fire or not. And I'm gonna have Michelle bring the camera down here for a moment because what's important is earlier we talked about brass and or copper fittings as you remember the pigtails there's one right there i'm testing everything i'm going to change my sensitivity mode and i feel pretty confident i've got nothing going on here now underneath here are some valve bodies and some tubes and hoses i'm not going to be able to access all of these because it is a a closed environment under here. I'm gonna let Michelle just take a peek. Michelle, if you can go ahead and peek under here, you'll see it's all closed up, minus where our brass, I'm sorry, our copper line comes in. But what I can do, is I'll make sure that my tester is working. I'm gonna go ahead and get us some fuel going here. And I'm gonna test. And you guys can see in here that we have high levels of propane, okay? So I, again, I'm doing this because I want to make sure that this is still functioning properly. Again, after our test, I'm going to clean the tip here, the sensor, let it sit out here and breathe. So I feel very confident right now that I have no leaks. So I'm just going to disconnect my piece here. I'm going to take my line off. I just like to reverse my procedures, shut everything down, put the plug in, move my line aside. Again, I still have my propane on. And now we're gonna go inside. And this, y'all, is where we're gonna talk about some recalls that have occurred. Uh, well, heck, why I'm out here, just so you know, there is a recall notice on this I'll put in the notes as well, or if you will, the description. If you take the original equipment version, at least up through the 2022 model year, to any authorized Winnebago dealer, they will swap this out with you. They will not hand you another one without the old one. That's how serious it is because there was a recall on these lines. But let's go in and talk about one of the other major recalls. Catch y'all inside here. So now we're inside Bad Betty and as you can see those that have a Winnebago Echo and this was actually going to apply to just about any RV especially if you have one of the suburban stoves. I'm going to talk about the model number here in a moment the recall notice that was sent out, and I'm gonna leave the information for you in the notes because it's very important that you take care of this as well and get your recall situation resolved. So we're here, we've got this open, plenty of windows open, the doors are open, and we know that our tester's working, we just tested that. So what I'm gonna do, just to make things a little simpler for you folks, and if you wanna learn this trick, it's not very difficult, I'm gonna remove this door, it's pretty simple. If you see where my finger is, right here, there is a little squeeze lever. When I do that, and I go down here again, if Michelle brings that camera right here, tell me if you see that, Shell. Okay. I'm gonna squeeze that. I'm gonna just remove my door, and I'll do the same thing to the other side. And the reason I'm doing that is just so that we can all get in here together. <laughs> 
So I've got my light and I wanted to talk about our gas line. So I'm going to grab this and Michelle's going to kind of follow along with my pointer here, which is actually a cool little back scratcher. And we talked about that we had a propane lead, if you will, line that came up into Bad Betty here and or your coach. It is behind here, travels up, whoops, sorry, it makes a loop. I'm going to tell you what I don't like about this either. I don't know if you all can see this up here where I'm pointing. We have a metal, um, let's call it a box here, and this is designed to protect components like plumbing and or valves and or hoses. You also notice that they did a nice job right here of putting a little rubber isolator on, and then they did a really good job of just setting our line right on top of that. Remember earlier, we talked about RVs, vehicles being in a hostile environment when they're driving down the road. Lots of vibration, a lot of things occurring, which ties into exactly why these were recalled right here, these suburban stoves. If you can imagine, we're driving down the road and shell look. And this is just going on and on and on. What is the likelihood of this wearing even though they uh, have an isolator? I don't know, it bothers me. I think what we could do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a similar strap like this, which is basically just like a plumbing strap, and I'm going to strap it away and lock it to the wall so I no longer have this wear and tear. Okay? So that's a component, or I should say a part of the line that I'm going to test. You'll notice that as the line travels up, it comes up here, and I don't know if Michelle can get the camera there, and it comes on in, and then it travels over, and it's going to go on to the burners, if you will. So we're gonna be testing all that. I'm gonna get the tester, and then we're gonna talk about the recall. So my tester is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on the low sensitivity. I'm gonna have it ready to go. I'm gonna follow my line as much as possible. I'm gonna come up under here. And again, just as much as possible, leave it in there and see if we get any readings. Follow my line again. I'm gonna come around here. And I'm going to leave it here for just a moment. And we're going to do this. I'm going to go down into here as much as possible and let it set in there. I would probably leave this if we were not doing this for YouTube purposes. Well, I'll talk for 30 seconds, so we might as well call it 30 seconds. And feel like I've really gone over every compartment that I can. Now, this shield... Well, check that out, Shell. There we go. That's a problem. We just discovered something. I promise you all that was not planned. Um, there we go. So, you know what I'm going to do, y'all? I'm going to go get a screwdriver, and we're going to pull this down. We're missing a screw, and that bothers me. And we're going to look at this together. So, just give me a few minutes, and I'll be right back. So, right now, we know, uh, as you guys know, I went out and grabbed a screwdriver. Actually, I cheated and grabbed my screw gun, if you will, just to make it faster. Um, this plate was dangling and missing one of the screws. This is going to be a pretty simple thing to match up right here at a hardware store. I'm going to go ahead and move this protective cover out of the way over by our doors. We're going to look underneath here just for fun together. And you're going to see that we've got some aluminum tubes that feed our burners and some connectors here. Whoops, sorry. These are our aluminum tubes. Our main gas line comes in and it comes off and it basically feeds these tubes that feed our burners. In the recall, these are the problem. And I'm gonna be discussing that in a moment. It's also in the literature. Well, actually, Michelle's gonna focus right there. Let's just talk about it really quickly. So basically, this particular recall was done based on the fact that the aluminum burner tubes, these right here, that my sniffer's on, might as well, right? Right here. Um, connecting to the gas valves, which are right here and right here. These are gas valves, y'all, right there. They're usually brass. That the cooktop burners can fracture from excessive vibrations or shock experienced through travel in an escape RV or an RV in general, like an Echo and or some other um, if you will, RVs. Remember I said hostile environment, traveling down the road, lots of vibration. I believe they changed these to stainless steel. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and fire this back up here. And we're going to look for any leaks. Again, I'm going to check every single component. You might be looking at this and if you're paying attention saying Jason and Michelle have actually not followed through on their recall. So we're going to be contacting Winnebago. Um, now that I see that it hasn't been changed out by description of the aluminum lines, those do not appear to be stainless steel, and the model number matches the recall. 
And if they can't take care of me, I'm gonna get a hold of Suburban directly. I'll close the video out with that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn our valve on. Lots of doors and windows are open just for a moment. And I still have nothing down here leaking. I just wanna make sure that these were pressurized. I'm gonna do the other one. Again, I can hear them and here's the test. So to hit my tester, whoops. And we were fully pegged because I have an intentional propane leak here. So I'm gonna let that propane air out. Again, we have lots of ventilation going. I can't emphasize that enough. So even though I detected no leaks here and I have no cracked lines, it does not mean that I'm not gonna contact Suburban and or Winnebago and get this resolved. Again, I'll leave you all the information, but that is important. I'm also going to go to the hardware store and get us a screw. So we're gonna move away from this area and uh, we're gonna be talking about some other things related to propane. So I'm gonna put our doors back on. Well, just for kicks, since we're here, Shell, let's show them how we put the doors back on. It's pretty straightforward, right? Cause you're gonna have to maybe do this anyway. Mm -hmm. Is And you don't have to take these off the test. It just made things a lot easier. So the same thing's gonna apply. You're gonna notice that right here, I have like just a little bit of a, uh, I'm just gonna call it like a little insert area. There's a better term for that with hinges. I'm gonna slide it on and I'm gonna listen for a click. I'm gonna slide that on and I'm gonna listen for a click and it's there. So again, release is right here, nice and easy. And again, just where that little pin is, I couldn't think of the word earlier, I think, is gonna slide right into here. I don't know if Michelle can zoom in there. And I'm gonna line that right up. And I'm gonna click it in, line that right up, click it in. And don't worry, I will not forget about that, you all. And I won't forget about my light. And I'm just gonna put them all back on. And there we go. And okay. we're gonna move on to some other stuff. So come follow us. All right, welcome back, y'all. I'm gonna have to put on my nice up close readers. I've got my tester, but I don't need it for here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside. We're gonna fire up our hot water heater. Again, remember, we just basically turn the little dial and we've got all kinds of fun stuff we can do. We're gonna go to the water. I'm gonna push the dial in. I'm gonna go just hit it to comfort. I'm gonna leave it at 120. And we're gonna go outside together and we're gonna test for leaks out here. So now we're outside and my tester is on. I've got audible and if you will, visual reads. I've got it on sens sensor low. I can move to high, or I'm sorry, high as well as medium. And right here, I'm just going to test for leaks. I'm going to go ahead and put it to medium, high, just for fun. Again, we can talk about all those settings later. And just kind of see if I've got anything going on. I feel pretty confident right now, even though we're outside, that I don't have leaks because we've seen how sensitive this is. I'm going to shut the whole system back down. And then we're going to talk about the recall and we're also going to discuss some other things inside. So come on in. So earlier I talked about that inside your RV and or your Echo, in theory, if you have propane and manufacturers are following the procedures or processes or in government mandates and rules, you're going to have an LP detection alarm with, it's going to close your ears here, folks, with the test button. And if you read the manual, it talks about when you should test that, how often, et cetera, and what to expect. I just say test it once a week, but do what you need. That's probably way overkill. Now, one of the things that is important to note, that when your vehicle is in storage and you have the house battery, the main coach battery, I should, I should say, turned off, this is not going to work. Now, how important is that and what does that really mean? My vehicle is in, in storage and I left my propane tanks on and my coach battery is off, meaning this is not getting the 12 volt feed, if you will, of power and I'm gone. I'm never gonna know it went off and my tanks are gonna bleed out and hopefully there's nothing combustible, spark, etc. And we're gonna wish for the best, right? Okay, well, that's why we talked about testing your system. Again, uh, pre-road trips, post-road trips, and when you go in and out of storage. Now, I want you to keep your eye on the green light real quick. If I was to kill the power to the coach, and those that 
probably are pretty familiar. Right over here, as you come into your Echo, there is a little switch here. And when I turn that off, all the power goes off. You'll notice that the green light is now off. Everything is shut off. If you have your coach and you're out using it and you lose power for any reason to your house battery, your coach battery, and this is not working, and you happen to believe that you're still going to use your propane stove, which will work without 12-volt power, turn it on, get a little match or a lighter, and it's going to fire up. You don't need the electric ignition. Then you should very well know that you are unprotected. So, point being, 12-volt power goes off. I'm personally recommending, at least for my own safety, and hopefully you, you'll follow your own suit, we don't use anything and have any propane components going at all and our outside tanks are shut off and or disconnected until we get power back in and we know we are safe. Because remember, you can suffocate in propane. Look it up. It's true. Um, now, so we're going to close that part out and uh, I think we're just going to sit down together and we're going to talk about the recall real quick and that'll be the end of the day on this one. Okay, so I'm going to make it pretty simple. Again, it's going to be in the description, but in a nutshell, if you look here, Winnebago Industries is recalling certain 2020 through 2023 sol solaces, 2021 to 2023 Travados, and 2022 to 2023 Winnebago Echo, Echo Motorhomes that are equipped with the Suburban 2-Burner SDS2 2-Burner two drop-in cooktop and they give you a part number, et cetera. It's right here. If you didn't get a notice, contact Winnebago. If you did get one, get on top of it, get it done. Obviously, we're going to get ours taken care of and we'll get past this. So I'm going to close everything up here. What that means is I'm going to go turn off my outside propane tanks. I'm going to make sure that I've shut everything down. And then I'm going to take a little mental inventory for me about the things that I want to do a little different that we talked about with my hose under here, my hose that was underneath. And probably put together a video on that and see if you guys agree with it. The other thing I wanted to tell you, I'm going to trade places with Michelle here real quick. Um, there are some propane lines that run underneath here. And one of the things that I noticed in one of the Facebook groups is someone had taken this area apart because they needed to diagnose some stuff and find out about some leaks. Their hose was sitting adjacent, if you will, right next to a screw, a Phillips head wood screw looks sort of like a drywall screw and it was probably at some point going to vibrate poke into there who knows so i can't promise you we do or don't have a leak down here my sensor hasn't gone off i'm going to take my sniffer i'm probably going to pull one of my vent covers off and i'm going to check some things out but again you can only hope for the best in some respect but i think that if you take your time you get yourself one of the testers you follow some of the processes and procedures that we've laid out here you follow your manuals you talk to your dealer and you go through at least some bare minimum steps. You have one more sense of security and or insurance, if you will, knowing that you did the best that you can do. And again, just disclosing, this is my personal process and procedure. There are things that you might want to do different and other information you might want to solicit. If you found it useful, leave a thumbs up, a comment. If you didn't find it useful, tell me about that too. If I missed something, let me know. I always want to learn. So thank you for joining us. And we'll see you on our next adventure. Take care, y'all.